Hello, F Sharp. Welcome back to our series on introducing F Sharp. Today, ah, uh, today I'm so excited. <laughs> We've spent some time, we spent a few days introducing lists. Uh, we've talked about some recursion, which is going to be a really powerful tool as we progress farther in F sharp. We won't come back to recursion for a while, but I, I want to front load it. And then we talked about pipelines and data pipelining using the pipe operator to kind of send data through some processing. And that, com that combined a lot of concepts for us. That was, that was a big one. Let's talk about another serious workhorse for the F sharp language and that is the humble array <sighs> this this happy sigh comes from that array the array and i are best friends <laughs> i spend more time with array than any other collection <laughs> because it is such it is the bedrock of so much of what you do uh well, of what I do. I don't know what you do. Maybe you hate it. <laughs> um, but I spend a lot of time in performance scenarios. And I often end up implementing my own custom data structures. And the array is almost always the building block for those. Like it, almost all data structures are just a wrapper around an array <laughs> and just some way of interacting with an array. Uh, queues, stacks, dictionaries, bit sets, I mean, I mean, B trees, I mean, like every, like, yeah. I mean, other than like linked list, I'm sure, I'm sure I'm forgetting another. And you can think of like option result types as collections on F sharp, but I mean, that'd be kind of, but we don't need to get into that. But suffice to say, I, I love, <laughs> I love arrays. And again, it kind of comes from the fact that I work in performance scenarios. So today what we're going to do is we're just going to introduce Introduce arrays, how to define them and how to work with them. It's going to be very similar to the F sharp list, but they are, um, I mean, they are very distinct. And then the big difference, and if we come over here to Milton real quick, I'll just draw it out. So let's talk about what an array looks like in memory and what an F sharp list looks like in memory. So you have, you have the, the F sharp list. And remember, this is an F sharp list. This is not a .NET list. So an F sharp list, it'll have a head element. And inside of that head element, it'll have the value it contains, but it also potentially has a reference to a, uh, its tail, which is the other elements in it. And this could go on and on for quite a while. Eventually, until it comes to some element where it points to nothing. There's nothing there. So the, this is really powerful because it, it working with them and recursion is really simple when you want to add an element, it's 01 because you're just prepending an element. Well, adding an <laughs> adding a head <laughs> is a one. Adding to the end, whoa, that's a disaster. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, so they're great, and they're also they're actually they're actually a stack if you really think about it. So they're great, and like I said, it's the first collection I've introduced you to in this series. Now, array is a different beast and array something else. So the point is here with this list is these elements could be spread out all over the heap. And so they are not necessarily on the same cache line. If those terms don't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. I'm going to have another series talking about like how CPUs actually work. And so those words will make sense in the future. So an array, an array is just a block, right? It is, um, it is just a bunch of elements. They are contiguous in memory. And so, and it has, it has a length uh, associated with it. And so it's just this nice contiguous block of memory. The types inside of it are homogeneous, hom homogeneous. They all have to be of the same type. So great data locality, uh, lookup by index is 01. It's, it's wonderful. So uh, if these things are so fantastic, Matthew, why don't you show me how to do it? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> So very, very similar to the list. So let a equal two, and I'm going to use, so this, if I wanted to do a list, I would do this, but I don't want to do a list. I want to do an array. 
And so that's where the bars on either side come in. So one, two, three. So now I have my array. I can go ahead and create that. Yay, I have int array one, two, three. Fantastic. Good times. And if I want to go look up an element in it, I can just say, hey, A, give me the give me the element at the very beginning. And that would give me one back. If I try to index off the end of it, I'm going to get an error saying like, whoa, index outside the bounds of the rate. So we have bounds checking on these. That's fantastic. Um, I, if I want, I can also use this syntax. So let B equal to, and then one, two, three. So I can do that as well. So A, this is one syntax for creating an array with some values in it. This is another syntax for creating an array with some values in it. I can also have array comprehensions, which we show those for list as well. We're saying, hey, I want to create an A with these elements, one through three. I can do that, no problem. I can even say one, two, ten. So I can say like, hey, what, the, what do I want the stride to be in here? So this is one, three, five, seven, nine. So if you're wanting to create certain sequences of them, you can do that. That's pretty exciting. I can also, like I said, have the array comprehension. So four I in one, two, 10 do, and I'm gonna say like, hey, I equal I times I. That's what I want the value to be inside of this. So let F equal. And so one, four, nine, 16, 25, that up. There you go. So all these different ways for constructing arrays. Now, if you want to use the array module to create them, this, so this is what I actually do more often is I'll say, hey, let, I'm just gonna keep going down the alphabet, array.create. And last time, if you watched the last one, we talked about the, the list functions being the list module. So there is an array module in F sharp. The array module holds all the functions for working with arrays in F sharp. And so if I want to access them like that, that, that modules in scope from the get go with F sharp. So I just say array dot create and well, I can just go array dot and just get this all this wonderful list of all the different things I can do with array. And in the future, I'm thinking about a series where I'm just going to go super deep on all these and when you would want to use them. But right now we don't have enough time to go into these, but like you can see, like this is an impressive list of things that you can do with it. So if I want to create an array, I'm typically doing this. I'm typically using create or zero create. And the difference between this is like create takes a, it takes how many elements, how big do you want the array to be? And what do you want the default value to be? So I can say like, hey, I want there to be five in here. I want the default value to be zero. And so I can go ahead and create that in G and I have this array and all the values are zero. If I do dot zero create, I want five. What zero create does, why are you angry? Why are you angry? Oh, okay, great. I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're seeing this right now. So array zero create, it's going to, and you give it a count. And what it does, it's going to give you an array of that size, but with the default value for its type. Now, the problem is, is there's not enough information here for type inference to figure out what is the type that you're wanting me to zero create. I do not know, Matthew. So typically you would have enough information and I'm just gonna do something to give the type inference enough plus one. So I've now used the zero with element of this array. I'm adding one to it. And so the type inference is now saying, oh, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Like first element you're gonna add. So this must be an integer. So G, the G array must be integer type. So I'm going to zero it out to, okay. So it's not, there you go. Come on. So, okay. It has enough information. It's able to figure out that's going to be a, an integer. You could also do this array int. 
And that would give it enough information. So you're like, oh, okay. Like array zero create, but you're telling me I'm expecting it to be an array of integers. So I'm going to do that. You could also change the float, change it to whatever. Now, something that's very important about arrays to be aware of that is different than the F sharp collections that we will uh, cover later. Arrays are mutable. They can be changed. The elements can be changed out. So if I, I created G here is a bunch of zeros. I go G, zeroth element. I want that to now be 10. That happened. So let's go and say like, okay, show me what's in G now. Okay, the zeroth element is now 10. So this, this is, this is, this is mutable. Like I can change the elements inside of here. So the other F sharp default collections do not exhibit this behavior. If I created a list, so let my list, and I'm just going to do, is there a list of zero create? I doubt it. Yeah, no way. Um, blah, blah, blah. So what I just, yeah. So I create my list and say like, Hey, my list, I want to change the zero with element to 10. The compiler is going to say like, what? No, uh, uh, not happening because the list type, that list collection F sharp is an immutable collection. There are other F sharp collections we're going to cover map and set, uh, that are also immutable. And so like the default of the F sharp language is immutable. Most of the time, the array is the big exception. And there was a time where there is a strong indication that we were going to get an immutable array type in F sharp that was going to be called block. I was a big fan of that because I would have liked to have seen a consistent set of collections. Since then, Dom sign said it wasn't really useful, so it's got taken out. Cool. You know, move on. Like, it's not that big a deal. But I think it's really important to be aware that, like, hey, this default array in F Sharp is mutable. Like, you could change elements in here. This is really important to know. So, now that we know that, what does that mean? Because with the list... Last time, like it was immutable and we were sending it through data pipelines and like that was all immutable, right? So what happens if we try to do that here? So let my values equal, and I'm going to use this array comprehension of so one through 10. And I'm going to do that same pipeline. Why, why are you, why are you be angry? Oh, equal. Duh. So I got my values one through 10. And I want to send it to that same pipeline that I had through list. And let's see if I can remember it. So let uh, my is it solution, I think that's what I did. So my values, again, we have, remember how we had list.filter? Well, we have array.filter and like all the collections are going to have these. And so we're going to say like, hey, let me find x, uh, x mod, how can I always lose, lose the mod? equals zero and then array dot map on x x times two and i don't remember all the other things uh, they're not important for my what i'm trying to illustrate here but i can go ahead and run this and i'm going to get this result now something to think about i did just say that the array type in a sharp is a mutable collection but when you are using these array fun when, you, when you're using the functions from the array module, it is not mutating the array that you passed into the function. It's not. And so the fact that array is a mutable collection may never come up for you because you're typically going to be working with it in this way. You're typically, I, well, depends on your domain and your use case, but like, you may not ever do this. You may not ever utilize the mutability of the array collection 
because you're just doing these processing pipelines and stuff like this. And so all these default functions that are built into F sharp for working with arrays, treat them like they're immutable data structures. Cause like you put an array in, it gives you a new array back out, put an array in, you get a new array back out. So like the fact that it's immutable may never come up, but, <laughs> but there's always a, but, um, there are some functions. Let array dot in place, sort in place, sort in place by, sort in place with. So these functions are the exception to that rule. And that's why they have in place in the name, because what it will do. So let's say, um, and I put in my solution. The sort in place function takes that array and it doesn't return anything. It returns unit, which is like kind of like the, the, oh my gosh, it's just unit. Like there's just like nothing there. It's not null, it's unit. <laughs> and so if I say sort in place, my solution is now, okay, well, it was already sorted. So, uh, I'm going to say array, uh, order sort, sort descending. Okay. What, why, why, why are you not? No, I just want to, I just want sort descending there. Okay. So now my solution is 2016, 12, eight, four. But if I do this array dot sort in place, now what happened is it has been sorted in place. It didn't create a new array. It did that work in place. And that kind of thing is very valuable in high performance scenarios. But you as a, as, as a new fresh F sharp developer, you may never encounter this, but I want you to be aware of it. Like, yes, it does exist, but again, may never come up. What else do you need to know about arrays? Um, not a whole lot. I mean, I can, no, that's the big, that, that's the important stuff. This is the, and again, this is just supposed to be a quick introduction. Later I'll do much more in-depth stuff uh, with arrays and manipulating them and working with them because like I said, I love them. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's the quick introduction to arrays, creating them, uh, oh, one thing that's really important, arrays do are fixed size. Once you create them, that's the size that they are. So unlike a list and with an F sharp list, it is very easy to prepend new values and get a new list back. Can't do that with arrays in F sharp. They are a fixed size. So you, so be aware of that. Like, so be aware of that. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> so. Uh, that's all I have for today. I just kind of wanted to get you used to the idea of like, Hey, this is how we define arrays this is how I work with them. And we're going to work with them a whole lot more going forward. So something I would uh, appreciate hearing from you are what are some of the kind of difficult, uh, data processing challenges that you've had to work with, uh, now with pipelining and with arrays, like we have some really powerful functionality to process data very quickly. And so I'm curious from you, like what are some areas that have been challenging for you in the past and you would like to see that kind of like a more clean, elegant F-sharp way of going at that problem. So if you could leave uh, those recommendations in the comments, I'd be really appreciative. Until next time, thank you very much for spending some time with me. I've really appreciated it. Have a great day.